RP Gamer D3 2014 here. We are just inside the South Hall. We're going to give you a look around as though you were just able to be here in the show with us. We all wish we could take you home, but you just wouldn't fit in our carry on. So, all right. So, you just enter South Hall. What do you see? Oh my gosh, so many people waiting for Evolve. Look at this guy. Look at this thing. Evolve, it's the four on one, the monster versus the four players. And if uh, you're really good and you live long enough, the monster wipes the floor of them. If you don't, then the players win. We've got Borderlands, the pre sequel right behind it, but can you really ignore that guy? The only guy more ugly than this one is Handsome Jack, who's the statue in the back there. I don't know if you can see him. On the right here, we've got a EAs here with everything. Sports, 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 who cares? And then Dragon Age Inquisition. 80 bazillion hour line to see the theater for that. Hey, let's go check it out. Who do who I see back there? I see Ubisoft and Sega. Let's go see them. Chris. Oh, hey, Glenn. You're lame. I am. Look, everybody, it's Glenn Percival from PS Nation. How you doing? Boo, boo. Oh, I was just booing myself. I'm sorry. What's your favorite Microsoft thing at the show? Actually, Sunset Overdrive looks really good. I'm not going to play it. Uh, their booth is, like, it's so funny. It's full of indie games, but nobody's playing them. So if you want to play an indie title, you just go over there and play it. It's weird. Do they have Bro Force? Yeah. I, I no. see people do they have Bro Force, Ed asks. Actually, I don't know if they do. I see people with Bro Force shirts, but I don't know where. Ed is really obsessed with Bro Force. Bro Force is awesome. No, it's at, it's at PlayStation, I know for sure. We'll yeah. go. PlayStation has a ton of indie games, too. They're all on Vita or PlayStation TVs. Yeah, they're showing a lot of PlayStation TV stuff with Remote Play. I played Drive Club today with Remote Play, which was... Did it work? It's good. It, it actually had a little bit of control lag, so okay. but I got over it. And then we played multiplayer. Josh and I did, and I took first. Just saying. J just saying. Just saying. Just, just saying. I played uh, Binding of Isaac, and the game went really slow, and then it crashed on me. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but it was okay. She said, uh, you were about to time out of the demo anyway. I'm so. sorry, but how can they not port that game over to a PlayStation in like two weeks? It's so simple. Because they're remaking it. Oh, that's true, yeah. They're remaking it from the ground up, essentially. That's true, yeah. It was in Flash before. It needed help. Anything made in Flash needs help. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> No, I've been seeing a lot of great... I just got out of the division. Wow. It's an RPG. I know. We're, I, we're covering it. Um, I don't... We don't have an appointment in it, and that, the line looks crazy for it. It is pretty crazy. It, was it worth it? Uh, it was really good, because they showed... They actually just showed a video of the, the demo that was shown on my, at Microsoft's presser, but then they showed a different section. They actually have tablet integration, and it's really good. So you actually control one of the drones. Okay. Oh, they showed that at E3 last year. So cool, though. I mean, because they had it on a screen right next to them playing. So the idea is I can pop in during my lunch break and help my buds out, right? Yeah, but the graphics are really good, and it's all real time. Okay. So you can see them running along, and you're flying over with the drone, and you can actually, like, spot different enemies, and you can actually, uh, like, send down tear gas on them. And, you know, you have a recharge, that sort of thing. But it's enough of not look like, looking like an RPG that I'll probably play. No, I mean, you know, I don't know. I don't play. RPGs. I can't play a game if people know I'm know playing an RPG. It's enough unlike an RPG that I'll play it. Oh, is that how that works? Yeah, but it was really good. I, I'm actually really interested in it. Um, the, 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 I love during the demo when they're doing stuff like, you know, I'm taking aggro. You know, yeah, nobody talks that. like that. This guy. Oh my God, turn three wide. I've seen him on the internet before. I just wanted to. I just wanted to be that guy. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, no, it, it's really good. In the, it's all new graphics engine that they build, and it looks awesome. So that tablet thing, I'm actually more so excited for that tablet. The tablet version. Thing. Well, can you just play the whole game on the tablet, or is it just you need to no, like own it? Ooh, that's a good question. But the thing is, it really kind of seems like Mass Effect to me a little bit. Or, you know, not not fully, but no, I know. But shooting you mean. elements, I really want to find out if it's dice rolls like a Mass Effect, or if it's you just really shoot it. But when you shoot them, you see the hit points come off. Oh. Yeah. So I didn't know it was an RPG. Yeah. yeah. Like an MMO, basically. Yeah. And, uh, I don't think it's an MMO because it's all campaign based. Well, I think it's more like a. Um... Well, okay, it's just yeah, an actually, MO. No, no, <laughs> like you know, Diablo you might, style. You might be right, though, because you're controlling sections. Or you're, yeah, so you might be right, actually. I don't, yeah, I don't know how that's going, but. Yeah. Uh, and I scored an appointment for Rainbow Six Siege tomorrow, so I'm happy. I'm skipping another thing, but I'll go see that. Yeah, that looked like a thing. Um, I'm, I was really excited. Screaming women as a game, as capture the flag. Yeah. Well. Yeah. But it's tactical. I mean, I love Rainbow Six Vegas. I adore that game, and I was really 
unhappy when they cancel Patriots, but this looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Was anything was uh, division wasn't playable though, right? Not that I know. Of. Yeah, not, not for not, the demo. not for you. Okay. Oh, by the way, uh, Kojima was sitting next to me in my demo. Oh, fuck. You. This is what he does. It wasn't my doing. All of a sudden, I got just, shoved in with all this jet. We're just going to sit here and hold you here, and like people are just going to be magnetic no, to you. No, because I have to go to my EA appointment in like two minutes. What are you going to see at EA? Well, EA always handles their, their appointments really stupid, where they just give you a wristband and say, okay, go see what you want to see, and then you wait in lines. Oh, how delightful. But we have two hours with them, so we're gonna, obviously going to see NHL. You're going to see Dragon Age? Uh, I think Dragon Age is actually separate appointments. What? Yeah. Yeah, they, we're not that tight with EA. We, they would not even return our emails. Go figure. It's like, hello, RPG site, we'd like to cover your RPG. Yeah. I, I've heard that it's separate uh, appointments, I don't know for sure. They told me, come back and check on Thursday, maybe. Some, yeah, maybe. Right. I would try to help you out with that, but I don't know really anybody. No, I'm, I'm not. surprised we got a booth appointment, honestly. Uh, Michael Tidwell, Fire Mist at the site, he's the only person I know who has the magic ability to walk up to EA and actually get something done. He would never tell me how he did it. <laughs> Hand so, hand not here. Bucks. I'm wondering if money was involved, you, you actually. You know, it's a little hand, you know, put the dollar in the hand, and there you go. How you doing? Well, that, that that's the dirty side of E3. Well, thank you, Glenn. <laughs> enjoy your right. enjoy your show. What's your game of show so far? Uh, game of the show, I saw Bloodborne today. I am not a big fan of those kind of games, but oh my god, is it awesome. So we're going to get you playing a Souls game on uh, on a, on an Extra Life, maybe. No, no, see, I can, well, maybe. People can pay to make me do that. <laughs> uh, the opening scene, because I saw gameplay, and Miyazaki-san actually uh, did our presentation. And um, the character's standing there, and it's all volumetric, like mist and fog and everything. And it, he was standing there talking, and it's rolling in, like, so realistically. Uh, like, blood stays persistent on your on your clothes and everything. And um, he actually made it a point to say, because somebody asked, like, oh, can you maybe make an easier difficulty for people that don't like getting their butts kicked? And he's like, nope. <laughs> so that was the best part of it. He's, he's pretty confident he's in making very, this stuff hard, yeah. Very, very cool. So, But he, he said it's not about making it hard. He just wants to challenge you. So uh, I see where he's coming from. And actually, the guy demoing the game was getting his ass kicked. He said they said if they didn't have it set up for E three, he would have been dead like ten times. Awesome. Yeah. So it was it was very very impressive. Uh, the order I am so over the order. I love it. I can't wait to play it. And Drive Club is a blast. I, I, I well, you pick three games for your game of the show. Uh, I don't have a game of the show. I don't uh, have a game of the show. Well, the show's uh, not done yet. We're not even halfway through yet. All right, fine. Come on, man. All right. Well, go get your appointment. Thanks for talking to us. Yeah. Good. good to see you guys. <laughs> all right, check out Sonic Boom. Yeah, nobody is wanting to get their pictures taken with the new Sonic characters. Oh, wait. This is, ladies and gentlemen, an E3 2014 first. Somebody wants to have their picture taken with the Sonic characters. Let's let's leave them alone. They need their privacy. They're really going all out with this game this year. It's a lot of Sonic stuff. There's even a cartoon show you can check out on the left there. And uh, plushies. We've got plushies and toy figures. Um, you can own your own very own Tails plushie. All right, well, over here we got Ubisoft, which I can show you the inside, but really, the outside is more interesting. Look at this. Big old pictures of all the games. Assassin's Creed, The Division, and, and guess what? Without an appointment, it's a two-hour line to see any gameplay footage from any of these things, so you may as well just enjoy the signs. Just, aren't they pretty? They even got a screen up there. Yeah. Just Dance. Actually, we should see if there are some Just Dance dancers in there for us. Come on, let's go check it out. So, here's uh, Ubisoft, Far Cry 4, The Division back there, Glenn was just raving about. Got the crew back there. If we get closer, we can see them in the full-scale driving simulators rolling around. Rainbow Six Siege and Assassin's Creed Unity. Um, they got these big old booths. You wrap around them, waiting an hour and a half to get inside and uh, see a demo of the game. Um, except for Far Cry 4, where you can actually play it. So, go for that. Strong. Ed, I have to ask you a question. What do you think about gaming headphones? You don't own any? No. You should. 
Well, here, here you go, Turtle Beach, they'll sell you some. Look, if you've got a really big head, or if you're a stormtrooper, apparently, you too can have a set of Alienware. Uh, oh wait, actually, Alienware's over here. You can buy a computer, because they're a game company. No, no, all right. Over here, Activision has a countdown for the next Destiny trailer. Now, I'd like you to notice the tr crowd for a trailer. This is something you can watch online. Just let that sink in for a second. This is what people do at E3. This is the show you want to come to so desperately. Keep in mind, this is what people do at E3. They wait in line to look at headphones and Destiny trailers you can watch online. Okay? Or Guardians of the Galaxy trailer. Oh, oh, is that a Guardians of the Galaxy trailer now? Okay. Wait, why is there a Guardians of the Galaxy trailer at the Turtle Beach booth? Why not? Why not? Okay. I come to E3 to watch What's movie trailers. The frog? Okay, so the, the frog sound, which you might be hearing. Oh yeah, it stopped as soon as I played the microphone. Um, it's, it's part of their immersive surround sound technology demonstration. Basically, they found a wave file, this frog that sounds really loud, and they're playing in their booth to make you think, oh, look, it's behind me. Uh, don't worry about it. All right. So here we go. With the, uh, this is the Destiny trailer. Not only can you see it online, it's the one they showed at the press conference. But because the screen is big, we need to wait for it. Not that I'm bitter. Okay, let's check out Bethesda. Okay, so here's Bethesda. Right, no, over there. Yeah, see? Yeah, the evil within. Can you even see that? No, there's a big old leaky brain inside there. You can't see it. Um, well, here, evil within. It's a horror game. They got a theater up there, a screen up here showing reactions of people um, who were playing the game and uh, started screaming while they were playing. Oh my God! Here he comes! Run, fool! Yeah, no, we don't need to. We don't need to see anymore. Yeah. So everybody, check this out. Um, Disney's booth is just dedicated to Marvel superheroes. Uh, the new addition to Disney Infinity. They've created a nice superhero landscape in there. But there's something cooler that you can do inside the booth. We have the time, we're gonna go do it. So let's let's see if we can get it. Those of you who watch Giant Bomb a lot have seen a lot of harmonics PR type people show up on it. We've got Eric Pope over here, we got John Drake. You can see them. And we've got uh, Fantasia, Music Vault in the background there. A bit more of a line than I was hoping, so I'm not gonna be able to jump in on it for you today because we're doing a we're doing a floor tour for you. But Fantasia is here, it's back, they're showing it at the show. Isn't that awesome? All right, Fantasia. And somewhere around here is Dance Central too, but I don't know. So. Ladies and gentlemen, we are about to enter the weird part of E3. This is the part of South Hall where the inexpensive boots are. Stick with me. We'll be safe. Stick with me. I can't protect you if you don't stick with me. First off, ladies and gentlemen, the Mobile and Social Game Pavilion. Look how completely devoid of interest it is. It has some seats. People are enjoying the seats more than the games. Uh. So in all seriousness, one of the things that people do here is uh, try and get some business done. So you see a lot of game development, uh, game distribution sites and uh, services. Uh, lined up in these booths here, so people are hoping that the retail chains will work with them to get games into their stores, and publishers will try and work with them to get their games in their distribution channel. Um, some other things you can see in there, right there, Chemco, uh, maker of uh, a lot of mobile RPGs. You know, so so quality. Um, we've got uh, an indie developer down there doing a basement brawl, um, and yes, there's a thing showing uh, American Express. I don't know why American Express is here, but American Express is here. Much more interesting to gamers though, Indiecade. Let's go take a quick look at Indiecade. 
So two games I saw off the, we got Hotline Miami, we have Hohokam just around the corner from Hotline Miami. Well, let's see if we can get some more. Right here, here we have the uh, indie dungeon crawling game from Capybara Games. You might remember them from Sword and Sorcery, among other games. Uh, below, check out Below. Guy walking up a mountain right now, hoping something more exciting will happen soon. There's nothing happening on screen, and yet I really want to play it right now. So I don't understand what that means. Uh, hey, we don't have time. We got a booth tour. We got a show tour for you. Uh, let's check out over here. What's over here? I don't. They're playing a dancing game on the iPhone, if you're wondering. I, don't worry about it. I'd like to point out the floor tiles here. You want to talk about budget? These you get at Harbor Freight. They're like six bucks for a pack of four. Very inexpensive way of getting um, padding. Padding, yeah. Um, Bill Duran uh, on the internet, he makes like cosplay suits for people. He uses them to make space armor. So if you ever need space armor materials, Harbor Freight's a store for you. Okay, th there's more, you know, we're just gonna, Ed's just gonna do a flyby of all this. Look at all these games. Everybody, Indicade. All right, let's go check out Snail. Oh, first off, everybody's site for inexpensive cables on the internet, Monoprice. They have a booth at E3. I don't know why. I don't know. We should go. You want to go to the Monoprice booth? Let's check out the Monoprice booth. Looks like. Looks like Monoprice now has gaming accessories. We got headphones. We got cases. We got. Computer stuff. I don't know what's up with this. Or, oh, Origin. They're selling PC, Origin PCs. It looks like they got keyboards. So check out this keyboard. They've got 10% off coupons. Wait. Yeah, use the code. Check the code. Yeah. Um, Give me that. <laughs> I'm assuming it's a uh, m mechanical keyboard because otherwise, what's the point? Monoprice keyboards. All right, let's let's get back to the games. Okay, Snail Games. They make a lot of MMOs, and um, well, they're a smaller publisher, but they've got some uh, some more game and titles and stuff. So we got Tai Chi Panda, Puzzle Hero Saga, uh, Black Gold. What else we got? I don't know, all sorts of things. Um, and they've got this big old tank mecha thing from Black Gold Online. I don't know. I don't play Black Gold Online. You recognize that? At that? No, you don't. Okay. All right. <laughs> Apparently, you can get weird swag. Wow. People want swag. Steampunk goggles and hats and stuff, I guess. Hey, RP gamers might care about Square Enix, huh? Yeah, let's go check on Square. First off. Ladies and gentlemen, the line for playing Final Fantasy XIV, the Leviathan Challenge, it is on harder than hard difficulty, but less than expert difficulty, I believe they said. So it is literally harder difficulty. Tried it yesterday, got my butt kicked. Um, people are very excited to play it. If you win, you get a t-shirt. If you lose, you get derided by your fans and friends and family. They actually call your family and tell them to, to disown you, so don't lose. All right, so we got Square Enix behind us. We got WB in the right of us and in front of us. Look, we got Batman Arkham Knight. We got Mortal Kombat 10. We got Shadow of Mordor. We got The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, which is weird, because why is that at a WB theater? Are they the one publishing it on consoles, maybe? Maybe that's what's going on. Uh, but that's that The Witcher 3's there, so yay. Um, wow, so you can go line up for any of those games and see a big, long demo of them. 
In front of us, we've got Super Ultra Dead Rising, Arcade Remix, Hyper Edition EX plus Alpha. Um, yeah. At Capcom, besides Super Ultra Dead Rising 2 Arcade Remix Hyper Edition EX Plus Alpha, they have Ultra Street Fighter 4, the new edition that I thought just came out. Um, so, again, I love it when the games that are already out are on the floor. Monster Hunter number 4 Ultimate is coming for Wii U, and, or excuse me, coming for 3DS soon here. Already out in Japan, obviously. They got the booth artwork up for Phoenix Wright Trilogy. Yes, we're getting the 3DS remakes of the Phoenix Wright games. Yay! And I don't know what else is going on here. Some, some sort of Capcom Pro Tour. So I guess they got professional Street Fighter players um, showing up here. So that's cool. Over here, more Square Enix. They got Nazgoth, Murdered Soul Suspect, the Final Fantasy XIV. There's so many stations of that. They got the Theater Rhythm and Kingdom Hearts. Ladies and gentlemen, that's all the South Hall. That's a lot. We'll be back to bring you West Hall. I'm going to go take a nap.